Well, you can do it. You, you are the creative minorities that the uh, great historian Arnold Toynbee used to talk about that made all progress possible. And uh, it's a real pleasure for me to have the opportunity to visit with you a little bit today. You know, I'm here to talk about the Public Utilities Commission of the State of California, which is in crisis mode right now, in meltdown mode, not to use a bad uh, <laughs> Some of you are going to probably be discussing amongst yourselves, you know, our friends from Friends of the Earth were here yesterday and they were saying that they have some behind the scenes ex party uh, information, they can't really share it with you. And uh, what I'm going to do today is to show you that that type of an approach in which you think you're going to out inside, uh, through inside moves, outdo the lobbyists and the special interests and the investment bankers that meet regularly behind closed doors and have drinks and caviar and all the other things that we've been able to bring out. And I want to see if I can disabuse you, not by a tug of war of trying to credibility, but by telling you a story of what happened in San Onofre because it so, so illustrates. First of all, what happened in San Onofre was uh, the direct result of a foreseeable, foreseeable outcome. Southern California Edison altered their steam generators by adding in 377 new uh, tubes. Uh, Artie Gunderson was here yesterday and I think may have touched upon that. And also, uh, perhaps today, and, and also uh, the, in addition to the, when they did the tube changes and the, the additions, their designers, fed back to them that it wasn't going to really work, that it was going to create too much steam. Uh, we now have admissions from uh, the, in the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's in, uh, uh, the, uh, investigative report by their internal investigation that, in fact, there's no way that they ever would have gotten the safety license. Now, this uh, next statement that the accident was the result of collusion between the government, the regulators, and utilities, that may look a little familiar to you because that was the conclusion that the investigators reached in the Fukushima case. And you could say the exact same thing. Uh, the, in, in San Onofre, they allowed San Onofre to go forward back in 2005. Mr. Peavy was the chairman. A woman by the name of Susan Kennedy was on the commission. They were both cheerleaders, and it allowed Southern Cal Edison to go forward without, uh, with the replacement steam generators without a showing that they were used or useful, which is a violation of California law. But the idea was uh, before, uh, once they became commercially uh, operational, within six months they were going to come back, and then they were going to do it. Uh, that six months came and went in August of 2011, and when the accident happened, the steam generators were not in rates. So that was a major problem Can that they had. Can you explain what that means? What that means is, is that they had never gotten the permission to be charging people for the steam generators. Mm -hmm. And in order to get permission to charge for the steam generators, you had to show that they were used and useful. But if they weren't functional, which they weren't after January of 2012, you could never show that they were used and useful. And what the PUC did is it distorted and misrepresented and tried to get away with the idea that, they, that the steam generator costs, the $680 million, were properly in rates. And one of the things that my partner and I did is, because we didn't know anything about it, we went back and reviewed the record and we caught them at that. And we actually brought a motion and Southern Cal Edison was ordered to put them into rates, but as soon as they ordered the motion to be filed, they stated, because they said it would be premature, the ALJ said it would be premature, and they were never put into rates. We must overcome at the PUC regulatory capital of capture, and, and regulatory capital as well. Uh, the, uh, the political, the bureaucratic, and business circles are in perfect coordination. Again, terminology taken out of the, San Onofre, out of the uh, Fukushima uh, report on how that came to be. We must see the need to reform the regulators. 
We cannot win at their game. We cannot become as expedient and effective. We cannot become dishonest and effective. We cannot join in the ex partes and the back rooms wheeling and dealing because we don't have the same juice as they do. We don't spend millions of dollars like they do. We don't elect people to office with all kinds of campaign contributions. We don't fly people all over the world. Uh, you know, our, some of our uh, PDC commissioners spend more time abroad than they do in the United States. Well, not literally. All right. So uh, now let me st let me tell you when San Onofre happened. Boom, the CPUC was on it. Their internal safety people had sent on the 10th of February. The San Onofre went out on the 31st of January. By the 10th of February, their safety people had sent an email wanting to come in and inspect and demanding information about what happened. The 10th of February, the 10th of February, 2012, when did they allow the public in to investigate? November of 2012. November, they had started the investigation in February. Now, SCE, however, got to come in and give their side of the story. On March the 12th, they came in and gave a secret private briefing to the Public Utilities Commission. That's one th briefing number one. On April the 4th, they came in and gave another secret briefing. On June the 19th, they wrote a letter saying, whatever you do, don't start an investigation. Don't, start a, don't issue an order of investigation. It's premature for you to do that. However, it's not premature for us to have one-sided meetings with the CPUC commissioners and give them misinformation about what was taking place and lying to them about what the causes were. There's only one cause. They ordered 377 more tubes into those steam generators than they could handle and they blew up on them. That was the only cause. You didn't need to be a genius to figure that out. Then Picker. Picker likes the California Club. PV likes the California Club. Anybody here know what the California Club is? I guarantee you, none of us will ever go to visit the California <laughs> Club, okay? It is the most exclusive club in the state of California, and one of the most exclusive in the, in the, in, the Jonathan Club members don't even get to go to the California Club. That's how bad it is, okay? So, the Picker, Picker and PV, and a bunch of the other big shots. Wait, wait, you tell us who Picker is. I'm Picker is the current head of the CPUC. He replaced Mr. Peavy. You have to have your last name started P, apparently, <laughs> to work there now. Picker, Peavy, Putz, I don't know who's going to be next, okay? Now, here's what they did. They all got together for drinks, and it was, we got this from the governor's office, by the way. We, we, we sent public records requests to the governor's office, and as a former city attorney, of San Diego, I know how to use the Public Records Act because they got used against me so well. Uh, but anyway, so we got this information from the governor's office that there was this big secret powwow at the C California Club to talk about Southern California Edison. Now, why would you be meeting at a private exclusive club to talk about public policy involving a public utility in which public ratepayers have to pay the, the toll. That, that seemed a little bit much. A private utility. A private utility, thank you, even better. Now, Litzinger, got to, Litzinger is the head of uh, Southern Cal Edison. He got to come in and give his little private briefing. When I had Mr. Litzinger for my, all of my 20 minutes of cross-examination in connection with the $5 billion settlement, they gave us 20 minutes to cross-examine, a total of three hours to consider a $5 billion settlement. I had 20 minutes, I said, Mr. Lissinger, <coughs> did you have any private meetings with Mr. Peavy? And he said, well, we meet with him all the time. And then I said, Mr. Peavy, did you have private meetings with Mr. Lissinger? And you know what Mr. Peavy said to me? Shut up. He said, shut up, <laughs> shut up. I don't have to answer any of your GDAM questions. Oh. Me, a sweet and lovable person. <laughs> I had never seen and been treated like that before. Wait, 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 I have it right here. Oh my gosh, here we go. Yeah, I have it. Here's I it decided goes. it would make a good ringtone. Put <laughs> <laughs> it to the mic. Come on, here we go. Close to play. Okay, I see. Can you hold that one better? What? It's just really, it's just really quick. 
Okay, I just need to. Okay. Okay. You can't make this up. I'm just hit. Uh, no, you're not here to answer your goddamn question. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Play it again, okay. I didn't mean to make him. Okay, okay. I didn't mean to make him mad. But anyway, so we got his. We we, we hounded him and got his uh, through the Public Records Act. And what we found out is because the question was, hey, we having secret conversations with Mr. Lissinger, and what we found out was that he had that he and Lissinger were talking. They get uh, blasted together on Saturday nights and talk back and forth, share you know, uh, these private meetings with each other. They were the best of, you know, uh, pen pals, uh, you know, uh, uh, text pals, phone pals, and they were talking and doing public business, you know, when he was half schnockered. I mean, it's uh, no wonder the race went up so high. <laughs> now, important point. When you're dealing with the CPUC and when you're dealing with these issues, you have to have precision. You not only do you need to know that you're dealing with a completely corrupt organization. But you've got to understand what your rights are and not get head faked. The, there's a group within the CPUC that's a safety group and it's a good group of people and they try to do their job and they don't li listen to. And they went down to San Onofre to look into what happened and the NRC inspector there told the safety people at the CPUC that the primary focus of the NRC inspectors is on systems that handle radiation. They do not have much control over non-radiation systems like steam generator, steam turbine, water treatment, and chemical systems. And the NRC inspector on site then looked to the safety inspector for the CPUC and said, hey, I brought this to your attention because the water treatment system systems are deteriorating due to neglected maintenance. Wow. Now that's something that nobody's ever seen before. No. I'm sharing that with you for the first time. I wanted you to have a little you know, newsworthy item before you went home today. <laughs> but that was something that folks shared with me because people inside the CPUC are fed up. They're fed up. So again, let's move on. Collusion. What you're looking at now is when we were trying to get an investigation to show that Southern California Edison was responsible for the steam generators going out and that the ratepayers should not have to pay any more for San Onofre because the negligence, intentional conduct, the reckless conduct knocked the plant out. And therefore, why should we pay for a plant that's not going to be producing any more electricity for the next decade? you know, probably as much as $5 billion, why should ratepayers pay for that if it was knocked out of commission by the executives at Southern Cal Edison? Without telling us, our good friends at TURN met secretly, TURN, 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 TURN around, TURN is a intervener representative that gets paid based on how pleasing they are to the Public Utilities Commissioners. That's how you get paid. You don't get paid for your, uh, your, your, your vigilance in representing ratepayers. My firm has an unbroken track record. We've never been paid. They always turn us down. And, and, and the reason that we need to change it is that that's not right. Okay, we've gotta get the money on the other side we need a concentrated wealth relocation program in which we put the concentrated wealth on the right of justice. So anyway, so here's what happened. Turn's lawyer met secretly with Henry Weissman, a former law clerk of, Mr. of Justice Scalia, in person, in secret, to sell us out and to enter into a bogus settlement in which you are going to get zilch. And let me tell you something, they said you were going to get a billion point four million in your reduction of rates for Southern Cal Edison. If you were getting a big reduction in rates in Southern California Edison's territory, if you were going to get that, you don't think you would know about that now? You don't think that would have been something they'd have had a news conference about? They met on June the, they met on June the 19th. 
They met on July 1st. They met on July 17th. They met on August. And you know what? It went, well, hold on here. What's happened? Oh, I'm sorry. I got to go, go to my wow. next one. I'm sitting here thinking, what's going on? Okay, yeah. There we go. More meetings. Those are secret wow. meetings. Those are secret. Go ahead. Is there any more meetings? Oh, there's some more meetings. Any more secret meetings? Oh, some more secret meetings. Friends of the Earth supported that. Turn supported that. Any more? Well, they supported those secret meetings because those secret meetings ended up with a secret agreement, which eventually they made public, in which the ratepayers were completely sold out and have to pay for the defective steam gener or the plant for the next ten years, even though the plant's not going to be producing any power. Why would friends of the earth? Yeah. They were they part of those secret meetings. No, they weren't part of the secret meetings. They ratified them. Yeah. They ratified them after the fact. Why did they do that? I'll tell you exactly why. Well, I don't know exactly why, but I'll give you my opinion. If you are representing ratepayers, if you don't go along to get along, you don't make it. And a lot of times, these advocates, and I understand this, they try to make a lot more out of what they've accomplished than what they've actually accomplished. Friends of Earth did one remarkably great thing in this case. They got the uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission to order a hearing. That hearing forced Southern Cal Edison to have to defend whether they should have gotten a license in the beginning, the license amendment, and that's when they folded their tent, okay? Once that happened, and we took the next step and said, hey, wait a second, time out. If you guys did something wrong, the why should the ratepayers pay $5 billion for the plant that's not gonna produce any more electricity and pay for the electricity it's not producing. And that's where we are right now. And what happened was, there was a, there, and this is what happens. The ratepayer advocates try to sell what they're doing as some big accomplishment so they can get paid because there's, it's so hard to get anything that's real. It's Im almost impossible because the, the crooks that have this thing, uh, uh, that run it. Now let me tell you who, why we know this. We have thousands of emails that we've gotten now from the inside of the PUC. And I'll tell you right now, the Public Utilities Commission is run by the same people that the banks are run by, right. which is Wall Street. The Wall Street institutional investors and representatives meet secretly with the, the, with the commissioners on a monthly, sometimes weekly basis. They get inside information from them. They are manipulating the stock prices. Californians have the highest rates in the country. And, and as the gentleman said, much higher than, than the municipals. And they're regulated. They're supposed to be regulated, but they're not. And when you look at the inside information about this, when you look at the emails and you see the back and forth and the PV and the you know, dinners in New York and on and on and on, it's the same thing. The Public Utilities Commission is as to utilities as the Federal Reserve is as to banks. It is a bailout. They, the, there's no risks involved. They are, and this goes back, I started uh, doing this kind of work back in 2000 during the, the manipulation. And, and you can see that's when, big time, the uh, Wall Street took over the, uh, uh, yes, can we go to the, okay. No, there we go. Oh, is that it, okay. Anyway, so that completes my, as you can see, and I'm an understated person. And I try not to overstate the case. <laughs> But I will tell you, I actually have understated the case. It is, and I, I laughed before about going to prison. I was a federal prosecutor. I worked for the United States Senate Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations overseeing federal government enforcement programs. That's how I grew up. I worked for the same committee that Robert Kennedy was the chief counsel of and was trained by people who were still there who had worked with him. And I will tell you, I am not an expert in PUC matters. But what I have seen over the last 10 years as the city attorney and then in these cases with San Diego Gas and Electric, we have a report back here and, and it goes over and it looks at the fire at San Diego, covered up, San Diego Gas and Electric equipment started it, billions of dollars worth of, of damages and a puny $14 million fine. Nobody was held accountable and the CPUC gave more money to San Diego Gas and Electric than it charged them in their penalty. 
2008, Rancho of Cordova, nuclear uh, 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 natural gas explosion, tiny little find. Everybody went along with the pat on the on the on the, on the uh, hand. San Bruno, 2010, exact same thing. PB tried to fix the judge who was going to hear the case to decide whether the ratepayers were going to pay the penalty, and they got that judge. They went in there, and then San Onofre in 2012, over and over and over and over again. Uh, Woodrow Wilson said we have to reform the Democratic Party no. before we can reform the nation. And I have to tell you, I happen to be a Democrat. This is a major problem in the Democrats because the Democrats are in the middle of this thing big time. It's right on up to the governor's office, right on down. And we've got to realize that you, you, the number one thing we have to focus on, and I think someone said it yesterday, is integrity. With no integrity, there's no progress. Anyway, I take... Yes, go ahead. Donna, would you come up here? All right, there, everybody's thinking, why would Friends of the Earth settle? Right. Yes? So I asked them, Dave Freeman, he was there at the meeting, I was there at PC. Why? And he says, we only have time to focus on one thing, and we're willing to give this up in order to put all our energy on shutting Diablo Canyon. That was his answer. Well, there's one other answer. He's also asking, his lawyer's asking for $463,000. That's another reason that I think they might have gone along with it. Yes, sir. So how do we use all this knowledge to shut the Diablo Canyon? Well, here's what I would do. I think what you need to do is have Diablo Canyon take on new steam generators, <laughs> put more tubing in them than what they can handle, and then get Mitsubishi to, to prepare it, because well, that comes up. No, no, in all seriousness, in all seriousness. Okay. Okay. No, no, here, in, all, in, all, in all seriousness, in all seriousness, look. It is, a, it, it is a very, very simple thing. Diablo Canyon is producing life-threatening nuclear waste when it doesn't need to. It's not needed. Okay, so that is a basic proposition. The only reason it's doing it is it's part of the rate base, or that we continue, it's part of PG&E's rate base so they can charge interest on it. That's, what, that's the, the bottom line. The Public Utilities Commission does not have the authority to shut it down as a safety issue regarding radioactivity, but they do have it with regard to it not being an efficient uh, and 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 uh, properly charged. Or, I'm sorry, an efficient. Uh, no, they do have it if it's an uncostly and unnecessarily uncostly. And they also have concerns about the other equipment, as I mentioned to you, other than the uh, the <coughs> reactors themselves. So if you could get the governor of the state of California to do what his job is, if you could get your legislators to do what their job is, then that's how you do it. You